Am I the antagonist for changing my MOH at my wedding rehearsal? My bridesmaids were one friend who I have known since I was five years old, May, and my sister totaling two. I had a difficult time deciding who to choose as my maid of honor, MOH, but ultimately asked May my friend early in our engagement. As the planning began, May started distancing herself from me. I thought she would assist me with the planning, but she seemed uninterested and often changed the subject. I assumed that she wanted her own space since she had been single for a long time and most of her friends were getting married. I practically had to beg her to accompany me on dress shopping, and during that time she hardly said anything. Then, during the bridesmaid dress try-ons, she arrived very late and appeared hungover, displaying a consistently bad attitude. The entire appointment turned into my sister and me comforting her. Before my first bridal shower, May texted me a week prior to inform me that she couldn't attend. This was heartbreaking and somewhat embarrassing since I only had two bridesmaids, making her absence obvious. I expressed to May how much I wanted her there and how hurt I felt. She assured me that she would make it work. A week before the second shower, I received a text saying that she couldn't come. My sister ended up organizing the entire event by herself, even though May was initially supposed to help. My sister also ended up handling my bachelorette party mostly on her own, despite my pleas for May to assist. However, May did show up in the end, which was all I asked of her. At this point, it became apparent to me that May was not fulfilling the duties we had agreed upon for the MOH role. I felt that my sister deserved the position more, as she consistently showed up and went above and beyond for me throughout the entire process. I decided to address the issue with my friend, as something clearly seemed off. I asked her if she even wanted to be in the wedding and she confirmed that she did. However, I decided to consider it further before informing her that I no longer believed she should be my MOH. The timing didn't feel right for that conversation. Leading up to the wedding, I continuously tried to arrange meetings with her in person, but she always made excuses and cancelled at the last minute. Suddenly, it was the day before the wedding, and I still wasn't entirely sure if she would show up. Fortunately, she did, but when I asked her to help me get ready at the hotel before the rehearsal, she claimed to be running late and couldn't assist. During the rehearsal dinner, everyone started lining up, and she initially stood right beside me. I had to correct her and explain that it was actually my sister and the best man who should be next to me, followed by May and our groomsmen. She appeared hurt but remained silent, and we proceeded with the dinner. She remained quiet throughout the evening. Fortunately, the wedding itself went smoothly with no drama. I feel terrible that I couldn't talk to her in person before the wedding, but I never had the chance to have that conversation with her, and I didn't want to address the issue over text. So am I the one at fault here? It's understandable that you were disappointed and hurt by your friend May's behavior leading up to your wedding. As the maid of honor, she had certain responsibilities and it seems like she didn't fulfill them. You reached out to May multiple times and even tried to have an in-person conversation, but she continuously made excuses and canceled last minute. This lack of effort on her part, including her lack of involvement in important wedding events and her bad attitude during dress shopping, is not what one would expect from a maid of honor. It's clear that your sister went above and beyond to support you, and it's understandable that you felt she deserved the title of maid of honor more. However, it might have been better to have a direct conversation with May before the rehearsal dinner to discuss your concerns and explain your decision, as it could have avoided the hurtful moment during the dinner. In summary, while it would have been better to have communicated your decision earlier, ultimately it seems like May's behavior and lack of involvement justified your decision to appoint your sister as maid of honor. Am I the antagonist for loosing it on my fiancé when he said that I should cater to him? I'm a 23-year-old female and my fiancé is 27 years old. We have been living together for a little over four years, and we are generally happy together. However, there is one issue that is really bothering me. I find cleaning and organizing to be enjoyable, as it helps me calm down my PTSD and reduces my panic attacks. I'm also allergic to dust. As a result, I take on most of the household chores, doing them while my fiancé is at work since he cannot actively help. I work full-time as well, but I am able to fit in the extra chores because I work remotely 70% of the time. Naturally, I take care of groceries and make dinner every day. For all that I do, I ask him for a few things. Not to leave his laundry lying around the house, not to misplace things he picks up, not to leave his hair in the shower drain. He has amazing curly hair, but it ends up everywhere and I have to clean it up every day. And to put down the toilet seat. Today, while we were reorganizing some stuff, we argued about where he wanted to place some CDs and DVDs that he wanted to sell. These have been lying around for at least six months, and if we put them where he wanted, they would just gather dust that I would have to clean. We argued a few more times because I felt he was not doing much while I was doing everything. On top of all this, he complains and sighs over anything I ask him to do, including folding his own laundry. Later, he angrily went upstairs to use the toilet, and when I went up after him, I found the toilet seat up. I've constantly and calmly asked him to put it down, as I've lost count of how many times I've sat down and fallen in, not to mention it is disgusting and smelly. I called him upstairs to ask him about it, and he responded with, Well, if you think I should put it down for you in your comfort, 
maybe you should put it up for me and cater to my needs. I was beyond frustrated and told him that his gross and entitled behavior was not acceptable. I told him to reconsider his attitude towards me and just put the damn toilet seat down. He shrugged it off saying it was my problem and that he could pee standing up so I should put it down myself. I called him a misogynist and slept on the couch because I couldn't stand being around him when he acted like I was in the wrong. So am I the asshole for reacting that way? Did I overreact? Or was I justified in demanding at least one thing considering all the work I do for the household? It's not unreasonable to expect your fiancé to put in some effort to accommodate your needs, especially since you take care of the majority of the household chores and have specific requests regarding cleanliness and organization. It is clear that these tasks and expectations are important to your mental health, and it would be considerate for your fiancé to support you in that. His disregard for your requests, such as leaving his laundry around the house, misplacing items, and not putting down the toilet seat, shows a lack of respect for your efforts and well-being. His response to your concerns was dismissive and dismissive, suggesting that he does not prioritize your comfort or happiness. It is important for both partners in a relationship to contribute and find a balance in household chores and responsibilities. Your fiancé should be willing to meet you halfway, especially since these tasks have such a positive impact on your mental health. Communication is key, and it may be helpful to have a calm and open discussion about your expectations and how you can work together to create a more harmonious living situation. Additionally, it is commendable that you are breaking away from the traditional gender roles and expectations that you were raised with. It is important to prioritize your own needs and well-being and not feel obligated to silently suffer or cater to your partner's needs at the expense of your own happiness. Am I the antagonist for not giving my schedule to an ex-friend? I, a 45-year-old female, met a man, a 55-year-old male, at a previous job and we became friends. We are both heterosexual and married to people our own age. While working together, we would have lunch together a couple times a week and enjoyed each other's company. Our friendship extended beyond work, and our spouses even met each other. I genuinely liked his wife, and we would often go out together as two couples. Occasionally, he and I would also hang out alone, or I would hang out with his wife depending on the activity. We bonded over music, and sometimes we would attend monthly concerts, with our spouses usually joining us. Around two years ago, we stopped working together, but our friendship continued until about a year ago. One day, my former co-worker called me and told me that his wife believed we were having an affair. He said that he was no longer allowed to talk to me, and I should not contact them again. I was upset by the accusation as I genuinely liked them both and didn't appreciate being falsely accused. However, I decided to let it go as I don't have time for unnecessary drama at my age. Occasionally, I still run into them at places like the grocery store. We have kept our interactions polite, simply saying hello without much further conversation. We used to see each other often at concerts, especially those featuring a local band we enjoyed. Even then, we maintained a cordial relationship. During the last encounter about a week ago, they even offered me a seat with them, but I declined, as I had plans to meet friends. Since they seemed to be extending an olive branch, I went to say hello during the set break, asked about their children, and they inquired about mine. It all seemed fine to me at the time. However, a few days later, my former co-worker called me and asked if I could inform him via text every time I planned to attend a concert from now on. He explained that his wife no longer allows him to attend any concerts if I might be there. I firmly declined his request, stating that I will not contribute to such toxic behavior and told him to never contact me again. He complained about being put in an impossible position and being unable to do something he loves because of me. In response, I told him that he can no longer do it because his wife is behaving irrationally. After that, the conversation ended. I'm normally composed and do not easily lose my temper, so I'm unsure why his request made me so angry. While texting him about attending a concert doesn't seem like a big deal, I dislike the entire situation. I'm currently stewing over it and questioning my initial reaction. Am I the asshole? Based on the information provided, you are not the AH asshole in this situation. You had a genuine friendship with your former co-worker and his wife, and it seemed to be a positive and supportive relationship. It is unfortunate that his wife accused you of having an affair and cut off contact without any evidence or justification. You have been cordial and respectful when you see them in public even declining their seat offer at the concert to avoid any potential issues. However, when your former co-worker asked you to text him every time you plan to go to a concert because his wife no longer wants him to go in case you are there, it is understandable that this request was frustrating and felt like enabling toxic behavior. While it may not seem like a big deal to text him, it puts an unnecessary burden on you and perpetuates the idea that you are at fault for their marital issues. By standing your ground and refusing to enable this toxic behavior, you are asserting your boundaries and choosing not to be involved in their drama any longer. It is important to prioritize your own well-being and mental peace in situations like these, and it seems like cutting off contact with them is the best decision for you. Your reaction may have been fueled by frustration and anger, 
but it is not unwarranted given the circumstances. Am I the antagonist for not paying a hospital bill? A few days ago, my parents gave me a hospital bill to repay for a visit I had in August when I was 17 years old. I have not paid it back yet, and I'm not sure if refusing to pay would make me a bad person. Here's some context about the visit. I participate in cross-country running, and back in August, I noticed that my resting heart rate would increase significantly just minutes into running. After almost fainting during races, I talked to my parents and we scheduled a doctor's appointment. The doctor thought it was simply because I was out of shape, but still sent me to the hospital for some blood and heart tests. My parents agreed with the doctor's assessment and believed it was a waste of time and money to go to the hospital. However, the test results showed that I had an irregular heart rate, which could have been a clue as to why my heart rate was spiking. The cardiologist suggested further tests. My mom did some online research and concluded that it was normal, so we didn't follow through with any additional visits. After that, I didn't mention my health concerns again. I don't believe it was solely due to being out of shape because even with consistent running for two months, my condition didn't improve. In fact, it worsened to the point where I would black out after races, which my parents were aware of but chose to ignore. The bill for my hospital visit has already been paid, but my dad recently handed me a copy of the bill to reimburse him. It amounts to $50 after insurance. Regarding finances, my parents aren't wealthy, but this expense wouldn't financially strain them. At most, it would mean cutting back on dining out for one night. Similarly, paying this bill wouldn't financially burden me. It's more about the principle. As I work part-time and approach adulthood, my parents encourage me to be financially responsible. I don't pay for health insurance, and I've never been expected to contribute to medical expenses in the past. However, I do pay for my gas, car insurance, phone bill, and occasionally chip in for family groceries when asked. I also cover my school fees and personal expenses. My monthly bills typically exceed $200. This month alone, I've already spent an additional $180 on AP tests and $150 on college applications. I don't mind these costs because they are my own and contribute to my growth and preparation for adulthood. However, when compared to others in a similar financial situation, the amount I pay seems higher than what is generally expected. Reasons for not paying yet, I believe that my health situation was not handled well, and the $50 for the initial tests seems like the bare minimum. Even though I am usually able to cover my expenses, as previously described, this particular bill doesn't feel right to me because my parents dismissed the results and I had to deal with my health issues for months. I haven't paid the bill yet, but I know that I will eventually be confronted about it. Am I being a bad person for not paying? Would it make me a bad person if I refuse to pay when the situation arises? Based on the information provided, it does not seem like you would be an asshole for not wanting to pay the $1.50 hospital bill. While it is important to take financial responsibility as you approach adulthood, it is also important to consider the circumstances surrounding the bill. It appears that your health situation was not taken seriously by your parents, despite the results of the initial tests showing an irregular heart rate. This lack of concern and follow-up on their part may have contributed to your worsening health situation. As a 17-year-old, it is reasonable to expect your parents to prioritize your well-being over a $50 bill, especially since they acknowledge that they can afford it easily. It is understandable that you feel hesitant about paying for a medical expense that was not properly addressed by your parents. However, it may be worth having a calm and open discussion with your parents about their dismissal of your health concerns and how it has affected you. Ultimately, whether or not you pay the bill is a personal decision. If you choose not to pay, it would be best to explain your reasons to your parents and have a discussion with them. Communication and understanding each other's perspectives can help prevent any further misunderstandings or conflicts. Am I the antagonist for refusing to honor promise for paying for my friend's new furniture after she tried to lie about amount she needs? Little context, I, female, 34 years old, have been close friends with Eva, 36, since our college days. Eva and I have also been close friends with Julia, 33. However, Julia and I had a big falling out about five years ago. We all come from a small Eastern European conservative country. I moved away soon after college, but both girls are still at home and still close friends. During the pandemic, Eva started dating a guy named David. As their relationship progressed and Eva told me more about him, I began to like him less and less. When she told me they got engaged, I tried to express my concerns to her, but she didn't want to listen. Earlier this year, Eva informed me that they would be getting married this fall and asked me to be her maid of honor. I was torn between supporting my friend and refusing because I don't think David is right for her. In the end, I agreed to be her maid of honor. In our culture, it is customary for the best man and maid of honor to gift the newlyweds the biggest and most expensive gift. The other guests then use that as a guide for how much to spend on a gift. I own my own company and earn a substantial income, so I asked Eva what she needed or wanted as a gift. She said it would mean a lot if I could help furnish their new apartment since their mortgage didn't leave much room for furniture. I agreed and asked her to send me a list or links to what she wanted. I offered to either buy the items for her or give her a check that would cover the cost of everything on the list. She sent me the list, which was quite long, but still within my means to afford. 
About two months ago, Eva called me and informed me that she would be having two wedding ceremonies, a civil ceremony this fall and a church wedding next year. She wanted Julia to be her maid of honor for the church ceremony and me for the civil ceremony. I wasn't okay with this and told Eva she would need to choose one. Since I had made a commitment to buy furniture for her, I even offered to keep that promise if she chose Julia instead. Ultimately, she chose Julia. It did hurt a bit, but I reminded myself that I never really supported the marriage to begin with. Fast forward to two weeks ago, when Ava called me asking for a check to cover the cost of the furniture. I asked her to remind me of the amount because I had a rough idea but not the exact number. She told me an amount that was nearly triple what I had in mind. After going back through our emails, I confirmed that my initial estimate was correct, and she had almost tripled the original number. When I confronted her about this, she initially tried to blame inflation but then said it didn't matter because I could afford it, and it's my wedding gift to her. As a result, I decided to retract my offer to pay for the furniture and explained that I would prefer to stick to our custom where my gift as a maid of honor doesn't overshadow Julia's. Eva called me an asshole for going back on my promise. So am I the asshole for refusing to honor my original offer? You tried to express your concerns about Eva's relationship with David early on, but she did not want to listen. However, you still agreed to be her maid of honor despite your reservations. It was understandable for you to feel hurt and disappointed when Eva asked Julia to replace you as the maid of honor for the church ceremony. Furthermore, when Ava provided you with an inflated amount for the furniture, it was reasonable for you to question it and rescind your original offer. It seems like Ava took advantage of your willingness to support her and her wedding by inflating the cost of the furniture, disregarding the custom and your initial agreement. You are not obligated to provide an excessively expensive gift, especially if it goes against the cultural norm. It's reasonable for you to want to stick to the custom and ensure that your gift does not overshadow that of the maid of honor. In this situation, Eva is the one who should reconsider her entitlement and lack of appreciation for your support. Am I the antagonist for telling my cousin the truth, even though it wasn't what she wanted to hear? I am currently on an extended visit to my hometown. The other day, I found out that my cousin Jane is getting a divorce. She, her parents, and her brother Dan also live in my hometown. Since Dan and I basically grew up together, I've always been close to their family. Jane married her soon-to-be ex-husband, Ben, about 12 years ago. At the time, Ben had a son, Max, from a previous marriage. Max's mom is a bit of a disaster. Although Ben and his ex-wife technically share custody of Max, he has spent the majority of the last 12 years living with his dad and Jane. Max's mom has been remarried and divorced several times since she separated from Ben, leaving Max with two half-siblings who take up the majority of her time and attention. Because of this, Max is extremely close to our family. Jane basically raised him and loves him like her own. Although Max does not call Jane mom, he refers to Dan as his uncle and calls Jane's parents by ethnic terms of endearment, meaning grandma and grandpa. Jane's parents and Dan likewise adore Max. Dan is not married, and Jane has no biological children, making Max their only grandchild. He even refers to me as Cousin Alcibiades and does the same thing with my siblings, nieces, and nephews. Dan called earlier this afternoon, asking me to come over after dinner and give advice to Jane. Although I am an attorney, I told Dan that I don't practice family law, nor am I licensed in their state. Thus, I wasn't sure how much help I could be. Dan said that didn't matter and insisted that Jane would just want me there for emotional support. At some point, we all ended up around the kitchen table commiserating with Jane. She said she wasn't interested in Ben's money. The only thing she wanted out of the marriage was to keep Max in her life. I must have made a face. Jane immediately turned to me and asked if that would be a problem. I told her best not to worry about it now, but she demanded that I say what I was thinking. I said Max is underage and you have no legal relationship with him. You never adopted him. Both of his biological parents are alive and share custody as per a prior divorce agreement. He can do what he wants when he turns 18, but until then, I don't think you have any basis to demand shared custody or visitation rights. Jane teared up and left the room. When she was out of earshot, Dan, my aunt, and my uncle immediately began telling me was a jerk for upsetting her. I said she was the one who insisted that I tell everyone what I was thinking and advised that they start preparing for this outcome now. Am I the antagonist? While you may have been technically correct in pointing out Jane's lack of legal relationship with Max, your response lacked empathy and sensitivity. Jane was seeking emotional support during a difficult time, and instead of offering comfort or understanding, you delivered a cold and harsh statement. Your comment likely only served to further upset Jane and the fact that she immediately left the room in tears is a clear indication that your response was hurtful. Instead of being dismissive, you could have approached the situation with more compassion and offered alternative ways to support Jane through the divorce. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.